So today's call is a Kyrak reach and it's not working properly. Box is like 80 degrees. Looks like we're missing a fan guard. This thing's pretty beat up. So it's 78 degrees in here. Condenser fan motor's running. Compressor's running, but it's hot. Suction line is lukewarm. Discharge line is red hot. Look at this thing, man. Pressure controlled bypass. The high pressure. So, at this point, we're gonna have to go ahead and put service gauges on it. I'm currently trying to pull the condensing unit out. Because everything's in here, this thing is just kinda lots of parts that don't belong. The pressure control's okay, but look at how he ran this. That, that, the gauge on that wire, that cord is not big enough to run the entire condensing unit. And the way this is running is, is the entire condensing unit's power is running through this pressure control. That's not acceptable. Here's the thing, I understand putting these pressure controls in when it's really difficult, but here's the pressure control right here. This, this box opens up and you change it, you just put the factory one back in. I mean, but oh well. I mean, I, I've done it before. Maybe I didn't know what they were doing or why they did it. Maybe they didn't have it, but anyway, so I'm pulling this out to be able to access this compressor and put my gauges on it. It's just really tight here. So I've got my gauges on it now. Punch. It's kind of sucks. Look at this. That compressor is still running, so the pressure control is bad for sure, and it's completely out of gas. Well, pretty much. So I'm gonna go get some nitrogen. There's probably just enough refrigerant left in there to be a vapor trace. You know what? Or it could have a low side leak, and that 27 psi in the high side could just be air that's been sucked into the system. Let's turn it off and see what happens. Ah, looks like refrigerant. Okay, so this tells me that that high side pressure is just air because it's dropped since I shut the system off. And when I smelt the refrigerant, what you know what was in there, it doesn't smell like refrigerant. So that's a, it's got a big enough leak more than likely on the low side that it's sucking in air and pressurizing the system, which is not good for the compressor valves. So what we're gonna do is put a tracer of 404 and then top it with like 200 PSI of nitrogen and we're gonna find this leak. I have a very strong feeling it's gonna be up in this cold rail, but we will find out a little bit more. You see this rail right here is busted and it's just hanging, and that's a, the refrigerant lines come in here, loops, and then comes back, so. So, got our refrigerant cylinder hooked up. We're gonna go ahead and open it up. I already purged it. Pressurized on the high side. Put a little bit of gas in there. That's probably more than enough. Go ahead and shut it off and then we'll put nitrogen on top of it. That is just a tracer gas so that way my electronic leak detector will pick up the leak because if I did it with just nitrogen it would be hard. You would just have to soap bubble it. And if it's a big enough leak, soap bubbles will work. But And then now we've got nitrogen hooked up. Got it on test. Go ahead and open this guy up. Pressurize the high side. Open it up on the low side too. It's leaking right up in the pan chiller. So, I'm gonna talk to the customer and see if they want me to do a temporary fix. They have a guy that'll come in and fix this. He's familiar with cutting, he'll cut the top of this and re weld it when he's done. Boy, is this thing butchered. Look how they fit a flared valve in there. This stuff makes me laugh. Okay, so what the well, customer wants me to do is I'm gonna temporarily isolate the top from the picture. So we're just gonna cut this guy maybe like uh, right here and right here, and we're gonna pinch it off and weld them shut. So that way uh, it doesn't leak anymore. Now that kind of stinks, man. Really not a great way to do this. It sucks. I try to make it easy for the guy, but he's probably gonna need to change this valve to get it going. There's no room in there for me to really cut it anywhere else. That sucks. Yeah, it really sucks. But, oh well. Okay, so we're gonna isolate the top and then 
That way we can pull a vacuum and get the bottom section running. Okay, so here's what we got going on. There's a guy that used to work for this company, Kyrak, at least that's the way I've heard it. And he knows where to cut these boxes, so that's why I'm not doing this repair. So what I did temporarily was I pulled the cold rail out of the picture. Now, it's not completely isolated. This solenoid valve, I'm gonna just disconnect power to the solenoid valve. Normally, if I was doing a pressure test or something, I'd pull the solenoid valve out of the picture too. But this is just temporary because this guy's literally coming in tonight. So all that I'm gonna do is turn off the temperature controller, shut down that solenoid valve, I cut the top and I brazed it shut. Now the other thing is, is that this is where my expansion valve sensing bulb is going to go. There was really no good place to cut this. So I gave the guy a couple options just to be nice. I made him a swaged fitting to redo that whole thing and he can cut it up in here but he's going to have to pull this coil out to get in there to cut that. Or I made him a straight fitting with the swage on the end too. I'm just trying to help the guy so that way when he's in here tonight. But he's going to actually cut the top of the box. So I'm going to be done with this. I'm just going to vacuum the system down and charge it up. And then the customer has this guy coming in. He's done this a bunch before where he has to cut the cold rails. And uh, I honestly would rather not have the liability of cutting into that because I don't know where the refrigerant lines go. So I'd rather say good riddance. But he's essentially probably, I've seen him where he's going to get in here and cut all this back out and then get in here and repair that. You can see it's it's right in there where the lines come down there's like a little crack you can kind of see in that corner but uh it's actually leaking behind that so he's gonna have to probably cut more so into here and my thing is, is i don't know because these lines go from each thing i don't know where they're at so i'd rather not even be a part of it so this guy will get in here and then he'll resupport these i've seen him do it before he resupports these rails but that's what happened is, is this rail over time this is an old box it just fell down and then the weight of it broke the line behind the wall. So what we're doing is, is isolating the top, taking it out of the picture, get the bottom running so they have a base section. The company before me, they just you know hacked the hell out of this thing, but we'll get them back up and running, so. All right, so the system's running. The compressor does have uh, bad valves though. Uh, the suction valve is leaking by inside the compressor, but think it'll get them through. I'm going to have to talk to them and give them a big picture repair. They got to get that cold rail fixed tonight and then probably have to put a compressor in it. I would suggest we get rid of that pressure control. I would suggest we tie in a high pressure control again, unlike this one. Change the dryer. You know, but for now, the bottom's coming down in temperature. It'll get them through the night. Also suggest that they let me get a fan guard on that because that motor that's in there has got a metal blade and someone sticks their finger in there, it's not going to be good. So. That's it. Sometimes you got to do these temporary repairs because it's what the customer wants. They can't always go the way you want them to. They can't always be perfect situations where you get to do new installations. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do to make the customer happy. Okay. This is one of those situations. Sure. I'd like to tell them they need to throw that whole box away and clean it, you know, put a new one in there, whatever. But that's not necessarily practical. Okay. Uh, I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. So in this situation, the customer ended up having their guy come in, repair that cold rail. We ended up going in there like a week later, putting a new compressor in the box. Uh, put that fan guard on, and other than that, they left it alone. They didn't want to change the expansion valve because it was still working. So, and I get it, you know, why not spend money if you don't have to? Now, we'll address if we ever have to change an evaporator coil or something in that box, then we'll put a new expansion valve and repipe that inside so it looks all pretty. But, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And this is a perfect example of a typical refrigerator you're going to see in a restaurant, okay? They're going to be beat up. Um, you know, they're going to have aftermarket components on it. Uh, I prefer them not to, but they do. Uh, they're going to be dirty. Okay, this is this is normal. Um, you know, you're you're never going to go see a, a shiny, shiny restaurant like you see on TV or anything like that. Okay, they're dirty. It is what it is. You know, to be honest with you, I don't even notice the the dirt when I'm working on these things because I I just it's force of habit. I put gloves on, put cardboard down when I lay in the box, and just move on. Okay, it's just one of those things when you're dealing with restaurants that you have to learn to deal with. So um, that's pretty much it, guys. 
Appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my videos. Uh, please consider subscribing if you haven't already and uh, check out some of these other channels that are popping up. They got some great content too. All right, see you guys uh, next time.